If you want to understand how light works in relation to taking photos and how a camera works, learning how to shoot in manual will help you understand the fundamental basics of photography and take technically better photos than you would if you do not understand the three cornerstones of aperture, ISO and shutter speed. So today we're going to do a uh, very simple demonstration. We've got our Canon C300 here. We have a Canon R6 here with a 50mm f1.8 on. I prefer to do this with a longer focal lens and a faster lens, but we haven't got one at hand, so this will have to do. The first setting that I always set is ISO. The reason why I pick that is because I want to shoot as low ISO as possible because ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor. Now what that means is the higher that number, the more sensitive that sensor, the less light it's required to trigger a pixel and show an image. Unfortunately, what that also means is that the higher the ISO, the higher the sensitivity of the sensor, the more noise you have, e.g. grain, uh, which obviously you can see in film back in the old days, but nowadays with digital, we don't want that necessarily. Where we are now, we have very, very good lighting. So there's really no reason why I couldn't initially start at an ISO of say 100. So we will set this ISO down to 100 and start there. As you can see, it's far too dark. So we're on a tripod, so we can shoot with a much, much lower shutter speed than we would normally be able to. But before we set the shutter speed, we want to set the aperture. Now on this, I want to have as much of this camera blurred out as possible, bokehed out as possible. And I just want to see the 50 in the photo. So what I'm going to do is I need to shoot at an aperture of 1.8 because aperture defines depth of field. And the depth of field on this needs to be that thickness. So you only see the 50 and everything else is out of focus. So we're going to drop the aperture right down to f1.8. Now you can see at ISO 100, we have gone super, super bright. So we're now superly overexposed. So what we then need to do is we need to drop or increase the shutter speed or drop it depending on how you look at it. So we then go, we're going to go up and up and up until our light sensor is sitting in the middle, which is currently at F is one one twentieth of a second, which interestingly enough is too slow to handhold. So you have to tripod that. So we now have the, the 50 on that camera in focus and we have the rest of the camera out of focus. So if I take that shot, we now have exactly what I want. Now, let's go the other route. Actually, we've taken that shot and we want to see the whole camera in focus or significantly more of it. So we then have to put our aperture up and let's say F10 should absorb or should be able to coat most of that. We're now going into region Y. It is really, really dark. Obviously that's not a good photo. So we've changed the um, aperture to where we need it to be. And in this case, that is setting the scene for that photo. Because we're on a tripod, we can shoot at a very, very slow shutter speed. So in this case, we're going to drop it right down to, in fact, 1.3 seconds, which is quite a long shutter. Now I should really be using a cable release or digital release on this because you don't want the camera to move, but this will do. So if we then take that photo again, we then suddenly have a photo that covers, oh, hang on, let's play that. We have a photo that covers a far greater depth of the camera than we did before. And obviously if we want to cover an even greater depth, we then can put our aperture up to F22, drop our shutter speed again down in this case to almost five seconds, take the photo again. Five seconds is a long time when you're waiting for a photo. Have a look at the photo and you can see that almost the entire camera is now in focus. If we were in a situation where we didn't have a tripod, we can't use a shutter speed that is that slow. So our only option then, given that the aperture is determining the depth of field, if we change the aperture, we're either gonna see not enough or too much of our subject. So the only thing we can then change is our ISO. Now, if we take that same photo and we're gonna do it at five seconds, we're going to put the ISO up to 3,200 in this case, just as a start, which then means we can then drop our shutter speed 
to a, even actually at 3000, at 1 25th of a second, which is your handheld speed, you still can't see the camera. So we're gonna to have to drop it even, even higher to let's say 12,800. And we are pretty much perfectly exposed at that point. So we're then gonna take the photo. And we have a fully exposed camera taken in a handheld situation because we changed the ISO to deal with the other factors that we were having to deal with at the time, which was namely no tripod. So whilst that's short, that is how in a still life situation, I will set up my camera to take a picture of a subject. Obviously now if you're out and about and you're taking a picture of a fast moving subject or you're doing night, night photography or any number of other scenarios, this isn't an ideal situation for that. When you start knowing about how to use those three pillars of photography, otherwise known as the exposure triangle, how to move one, the other two need to move to compensate for it. And once you understand how those three all move in harmony, which is very, very straightforward using a setup like this to learn these sort of things, you will always go out and you'll always be able to shoot on manual and make sure that the right amount of light comes through to hit your sensor to make sure that you get the photo you want. If you do take some really nice photos, feel free to join them up on Clickersnap and I look forward to our next tutorial.